Hey guys, Justin here from Tin Man Electronics. Welcome to part three of three from my little servo motor series, okay? In part one, we took a look at the mechanical assembly of servo motors, so we opened it up, took a look inside, saw the gears, kind of how the components are usually placed inside a servo motor. In the part two, I actually took at the electrical requirements, so the pinout and the actual signal that you're giving the servo motor. And now episode three, this is what it's all been coming down to. I was inspired from one of Dave Jones's EEV blog reverse engineering videos and I thought I should try teaching that to myself. And you guys have already seen this, but I've got the broken servo motor and what I want to do is I just want to uh, take it apart just take a look at all these pieces and uh, figure out exactly what the schematic looks like so what I'm gonna do to reverse engineer this servo motor is first I'm gonna take pictures of what it looked like before because once I cut this oh like cut off all of these wires clean it up uh, I'm not even gonna remember what connected to what so I'm gonna take some pictures of that and then I got to clean the board, like I said, I got to chop off the wires and everything, clean up, take off all this hot snot and clean up all this charred residue from, uh, from a couple of these burnt out chips. And then I got to take pictures. So I'm going to set this up on a table with the tripod that this camera is mounted on. I'm going to have another camera looking down. I'm going to take pictures of both sides of the board from the same distance, same focus, same, uh, same parameters and then I'll load that up into some software and from there I do a bit of image manipulation get some negatives and then in software using maybe like Illustrator, Inkscape or uh, Visio I can overlay these images so that I could see the top and the bottom layers and uh, I could take a look at them one by one if I want using software and I will also draw lines you know connecting you know what's connected to what what vias or what pins are going to what and finally I'm going to draw out the schematic of the entire servo motor and then I'll see if I learned anything let's uh, let's try it out my first time at uh, reverse engineering something okay so I just finished that that took me between two and four hours I don't even remember anymore that that was very painful I don't particularly suggest this reverse engineering thing unless you really got to do it you got to really weigh the time to like worth it ratio because that that took a long time a tiny little board about a square inch big took me like two to four hours that's insane and and you know what I didn't even get any capacitor uh, any capacitor readings like I I've just got resistor readings the capacitor I don't even have a bridge to, to read the capacitors and uh, there's a pro and there's a proprietary chip right on the board a high-tech proprietary chip and I think it's either a microcontroller now or a, a monolithic kind of IC that just does the the PID control for the servo motor so let me explain how I, I did this, okay? Because I, I clearly didn't take any photos or video of me actually doing it, but I, uh, I basically set up the camera, looking down, took some pictures of both sides of the board after I've cleaned it up. I, I picked off a lot of the, the hot glue. I cleaned it up with some isopropyl alcohol and uh, took those pictures, loaded them up in Photoshop, cropped it, made negatives out of that and uh, made sure they're black and white too so that I could work on the computer because I didn't have any transparencies. What you typically do is you print it off onto transparencies and you could just lay them on top of each other and then you could you could kind of just flip through between the two. It's very easy. You get yourself a, a dry erase marker and you could mark exactly where you've gone, you know, what you've logged. But since I did not have transparencies, I decided to do it entirely in Illustrator where I just had multiple layers. So I had my uh, my top board layer and my bottom board layer. And then I had two more layers for uh, for my markings, like the, the dry erase markings. And I just went through it and uh, 
I'm just showing you guys some pictures right now actually. Now something to note is uh, transistor and other SMD component codes. It was uh, tough to find which transistors were actually used on this board. I'm 100% sure they're transistors except I don't know which ones because I'm trying to read it and it's all charred on the top from whatever kind of little fire was going on in there that uh, that broke the servo but it was it was difficult to find which sir uh, which transistors I think I have an idea I wrote it down on uh, one of the drawings I made and in the end the reverse engineering thing is all so that you can make this schematic and you know hopefully it's gonna help you figure out something and for me it, it was uh, you know I wanted to know if there's any kind of isolation between the power and the signal and no no there's no isolation I'm pretty sure and uh, but another interesting thing was what I found about the proprietary chip like I mentioned it's most likely a microcontroller or a monolithic IC and I'm pretty sure it's a monolithic IC where it just uh, does its thing it's all just hardware inside there there's a couple diodes I couldn't figure out what they were doing because the, just the markings on top of these SMD components are not descriptive at all. That's what I really like about like you know larger quad flat packs or larger SMD parts and uh, even you know through hole parts which have the space for writing as well. And you know these diodes, one has like a D and a J on it, and another one has a 3316B, and it's like you know you search it up, you find some hints, you find some other hints, but sure enough you don't find anything. It's such a pain in the bum, like, you really, you really gotta have a need to reverse engineer a board to make it worth it. Because, I mean, like, it took me four, two to four hours, for, I'm, I'm fried, like, I can't even, I can't even finish this video. Maybe I'm just gonna end it right here, like, I, during this reverse engineering, it was, is a lot of back and forth, like, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm oming out, I'm, I'm finding what's connected together on the board at my lab desk and then I have to walk over to the computer and, uh, you know, open up Illustrator and, and look back and forth between the two layers, top and bottom to see, oh, is this, you know, is this via connected or, but, you know, it's, it wasn't bad. This was a small board, so it was easier and it's a square inch large and it still took me two to four hours. I think it's probably because it's my first time and if I did it again, it would go faster but you know what on a bigger board it's tougher to see what's connected from one side to the other and it would help a lot to have the transparencies right there to uh, to just make the comparison illustrator was just fine except I mean I was walking back and forth from the desk and the computer and uh, so the circuit wasn't entirely what I expected there's this strange feedback circuit that goes back into the proprietary chip and just the way that they're, um, you know, turning on the motor with their, their uh, transistor H bridge is, uh, I don't know, it's, it's not conventional. And also the way that, I don't know, like they're reading feedback from the motor. It's, it's just stuff that I haven't seen before. You know, textbook stuff says that you connect uh, resistors straight to the bases of these transistors. But that was not the case with this board. They just connected the uh, the pins from the proprietary chip straight to the base, not even going through a resistor. So, you know, there could be a resistor or a, you know a, a transistor inside there controlling the current out of the, the the pins, which would make sense. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that could be going inside the proprietary chip that is indeed protecting their IP because, like, obviously they don't want people stealing their uh, their design and you know I, I just did I just reverse engineered it made a schematic of it and uh, you know maybe there's some stuff that's going on inside the proprietary chip that's keeping me from actually recreating this so uh, man, man, man. so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode part three of three of the servo motor series I reverse engineered it I'm not doing it again I'm not doing I don't know. Unless you guys really want me to reverse engineer something or like it's worth it, I'm not I'm not going to do this again. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up because it really helps uh, the search engine optimization on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at Justin Tinman and also check out my webpage at www.tinmanelectronics.com. I'm Justin, your host from Tinman Electronics. 
reverse engineering because it's a good waste of time, that's engineering. And you know what? I didn't even hook up the oscilloscope yet. Like, this is only half reverse engineered. I didn't turn this servo on and, and scope it with the meter. Like, this is, uh, this is only half the work. And, you know, I from the last video in part two, I talked about the 50 hertz PWM signal that you give it and also the power supply that you're giving it. And uh, that's all we know, you know, that's all we care about because that's what operates the servo. But what's going on inside might interest us as well. So if you guys want to see the different signals going on in there, and maybe I'll have a, it'll give me a better hint of what that proprietary chip is doing. If you want to hear about that, uh, comment in the YouTube comment section and, and just let me know.